Cincinnati is boring. There's nothing to do there. It's just another Midwest town. You only live there if you have to live there. Nobody actually wants to move to Ohio, right? Hey guys, we're going to we're going to break these myths tonight. You're going to help me out. What's up? Welcome in to Team Staniel Live. My name is Eric Staniel where we are talking all things real estate, news and living in Cincinnati, Ohio and Northern Kentucky. Welcome into the live. There's a few of you in the chat already. Um First things first, if you don't mind, drop us a line in the chat. If you're watching this tonight, where are you watching from? Uh, would love to shout you guys out. Uh, and this this whole live experience is for you guys to interact and ask your questions, whether that's real estate or just living in Cincinnati related. Uh, we want to do that up on the channel tonight, up on the show. What we're going to want to do, we're going to look at some um, recent events. It's been a pretty exciting weekend in Cincinnati. A lot of things going on. Hopefully you got to enjoy some of those events and are going to as we head into the 4th of July holiday. But also we're going to look at the top attractions overall in Cincinnati. And we're going to rank them kind of top to bottom, at least from my experience. But if you guys jump into the chat, would love to know what your favorite things are in Cincinnati as well. So this will be a little bit interactive, but a lot of people want to know things to do in Cincinnati. And that's both you know, there's kind of two audiences for that, right? There's people who are living locally who are like, hey, what's going on this weekend? I want to go, I want to go do something fun. And there's people looking to move here from, you know, another state. And you're like, what actually is there to do in Cincinnati? So we're going to hit kind of both of those audiences. Um, maybe most of you who aren't living here because you don't know, that, like, hey, we actually got some things going on here. A lot of things that you might actually enjoy. Um, but if you are watching again, Feel free to drop a line in the chat. We've got uh, some people jumping in already. So thanks so much. Hey, uh, T-Man. T-Man is staying in Toledo, Ohio tonight. What's up, T-Man? Glad you're glad you're joining in. Um, so I'm asking in the chat, hey, where are you watching from? And what's your favorite thing uh, to do in Cincinnati? So uh, T-Man, thanks for jumping in. Um, Mark Stanio. Hey, how about that? My pops. Joining in from Florence, Kentucky. What's going on, Dad? Uh, good, good to have you on here. Hey, the three people watching the channel. One of them is my dad. We're hitting pretty good numbers here. Um, Alex, what's up? Watching. Uh, I'm assuming you're watching from you from downtown, but you already answered the question. What's your favorite thing? And your favorite thing to do in Cincinnati is actually live downtown in Cincinnati. You can easily walk to anywhere you need to go. Um, really interesting you say that, Alex, because. I'm sure you're aware of this. What we're seeing uh, in the real estate market with now that we're past COVID and a lot of people are still working from home and a lot of uh, businesses are, are, don't need as much office space, you're starting to see this turn in downtown Cincinnati. I'm sure this is happening across the country where traditional retail or commercial office space is getting flipped into residential living. I know that there's a big project happening right now, the Carew Tower, which is um, a famous famous building downtown. It's, I think it's surpassed in height by the great American building with great Americans Tierra, but it's the, it's the building that like when, when all the, when all the movie films come here to shoot in Cincinnati, they want that old school New York look. They're definitely shooting the crew tower. Cause it looks pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, Alex living in downtown is your favorite thing. And it, it is super accessible. Now that you've got the streetcar down there, that's obviously amazing because you can get not only from downtown, but up to, you know, anywhere downtown, up to, over the Rhine, up to Rheingeis, Finley Market. There are, are talks. I don't know if you guys have been watching this in the news. And we're not going to get into this too much tonight. But the conversation is starting to, to pick up again about uh, expanding the streetcar. So, Alex, I'm sure you would like that. But um, especially they're talking about expanding it up to Uptown, University of Cincinnati, the different hospitals up there. And how could they make that happen? I mean, especially the people who work up there, which is a lot of people, uh, both at the university and those hospitals, they would love to be able to take the streetcar downtown to OTR. Um, Bree, what is up? Watching from Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome in, Bree. So glad to have you here. Guys, love having you uh, check in here. Feel free to do that throughout the night. We'll try to get your comments and questions. But let's get into a little bit um, about things to do in Cincinnati. And I, again, I want to hear from you. But if you're watching and you're like, what the heck is there to do in Cincinnati? We're going to talk through those things. I first want to uh, run you guys by this website. If you don't live in the area, but you're trying to figure out what is there to do in Cincinnati, visit Cincy.com has got you covered on uh, a lot of different things, things to do. 
you know, events, restaurants, places to stay, plan your visit. We recently did a video on the channel of if you have 24 hours in Cincinnati, like what would you do in those 24 hours? And this is a good site to kind of pair that in. And I tried to give my take on like, these are the things you can do. These are the things you should pass on. Um, here you're seeing this great shot of Orion up at Kings Island, which I'm sure they're going to have an awesome fireworks show tonight. Well, they have a show every night, but I'm sure their 4th of July is going to be awesome. This roller coaster, by the way, is really intense. We just we did a video on top roller coasters at Kings Island. And surprisingly, this came in number three, but it's really close. And um, the more I ride this, the more I actually enjoy it. Um, Cincinnati events, just checking out here. So again, if you're if you're kind of new to Cincinnati, you don't know what's going on um, and what the region has to offer. This is saying this is our home. We're inviting you to our party. Many, uh, many, many parties. Actually, we have the largest Oktoberfest outside uh, outside of Munich. So if you don't know, there's a, a large German population. It's a big reason why uh, Cincinnati has all these great breweries. There's a, a lot of local breweries in town. There's a great history of breweries. Uh, we, and we have this Oktoberfest celebration every year. It's a lot of fun. We have flower shows, comedy and music festivals, pride celebrations, professional sports games. So we've got the Bengals, we've got the Reds, we've got FC Cincinnati. We have Blink, and I'm gonna have to do it my an, I'm gonna have to do its own video on Blink. Blink, if you don't know, is an, an incredible event that Cincinnati puts on. It's the largest light experience in this in, in the United States. It's very very cool. Um, since he sold Black Taste Festival, Festival, there's the Taste of Cincinnati, which we have every May, uh, which is awesome downtown. So a lot of things to do, festivals, attractions, museums, sports, parks. Um, and I just wanted to give you guys a taste of what was happening this weekend um, because there's a lot going on. And uh, and then we'll kind of get into ranking the top things in Cincinnati. And again, I want to want to hear what your thoughts are on that. Um, so things to do recently here and this weekend, you've got Lavender Field. So the big thing over the weekend was Taylor Swift was here. Taylor Swift came in, uh, sold out Paycor Stadium two nights in a row, Friday and Saturday night, 65,000 plus people, um, put on an amazing show. So there are all these kind of events surrounding Taylor Swift. You had the Reds game. You had a food tour at Finley Market. You had um, top 10 sites and bites at, starting at the Bakes. Um, there's a picture in front of Music Hall there. You have this awesome Claude Monet, which I want to get to this and I want to take my kids here this immersive experience at uh, the art museum. I, I really want to get into there. you got the fireworks at Kings Island. you got a Finley Market brunch. And this is just page one of 12. <laughs> so there was like 124. You're not going to be bored here is the point. You've got the annual. Oh, this is so much fun. I forgot about this. Down at Coney Island, you've got this annual um, uh, balloon glow where they light up all of these hot air balloons. Uh, if you've never been there, I highly recommend it. They've got them all down on the ground and you're walking around and they they blow on the fire and it like lights them all up. So as it's getting dark and then they have a huge fireworks show there after. So that one is really, really fun. Of course, you're going to have a lot of different Fourth of July, um, you know, uh, firework firework shows all over um, all over the city. I'll tell a quick story since my dad is on here, if he's still if he's still on. When I was courting my wife, which they just learned some stories about this. So my wife and I, we've been married. It'll be 18 years in December. And my dad was a pilot and he trained all three of his sons. I'm his youngest to get our, our own pilot pilots, private pilot's license. And one summer around the 4th of July, um, on the 4th of July, I decided, hey, it'd be really romantic if I took my wife up on a, on a little plane ride in the Cessna. And we flew up to Kings Island where we knew there'd be a fireworks show. And fireworks were just, you could see forever. And you just see fireworks shows going off everywhere. I mean, we could probably see, who knows, 30, 40 different shows at all these different you know, municipalities around the Cincinnati area. Super fun. So we're circling around Kings Island and the fireworks are going off and we're watching them. And I'm thinking that this is really cool. And then one of the fireworks, one, one, one goes off above us <laughs> when we're flying. My dad and I look at each other and we you know, put in some power, do a little bit of climbing in terms of, um, in terms of uh, vertical height there so we could get above those things. So we're going a little bit further and we thought, oh man, we got away with one there. And then my, my soon to be wife um, had a flash back in the day when you had flash, she had like a disposable camera or something like that. She took a picture and she had the flash on and it like lit up our, the cabin and we're like, oh my gosh, we've been hit. But it was just her camera, but we're so scared. Um, that was a fun story. That was a fun story. Okay. 
Um, Alex said, I heard that they might connect it to the convention center too. That's so Cincinnati podcast. Yeah, that's what I've been listening to. Uh, that podcast, um, a little biased, but I would love it. Yeah. Uh, I mean that convention center, if we could get that in, I, I know there's plans to redo the convention center to put a hotel there. That is really one of the things that is keeping, I think Cincinnati from being, you know, from really blowing up is because we're kind of like, as you know, Alex, we're kind of cramped on space in the downtown area. We've been losing out to cities like Indianapolis and uh, Nashville to these larger conventions or, you know, March Madness or things like that, because the one arena we have, Heritage Bank downtown, it's just kind of boxed in. It's outdated. We need a bigger space. And so, yeah, if they were to connect it over the convention center, that would be huge, too. Um, hey, Sh uh, Sherry Lynn Pierce, what's going on? Cincinnati my, is your home. You're watching from Atlanta. Uh, 36 years wrapping up July. Here's my birthday month, third year relocating back. Thanks for checking in. That's awesome, Sherry Lynn. Um, thanks for watching from Atlanta. You know, that's one of the things I think when people live here, uh, Cincinnati can always be, always be your home. It's a place that a lot of people want to come back to even if they leave it. So, okay, let's keep going here. So I just wanted to give you guys a taste uh, of you, you locally. You guys know, I mean, how many things are going on here. It's just Rocking at the Roebling, um, Salsa on the Square, just so many different fun activities this weekend. The Florence Halls down where my dad's watching from, Florence, Kentucky, which uh, is a great, um, it's actually a great alternative if you don't want to go downtown Cincinnati. If you're more northern Kentucky, you don't want to take the trek all the way. It's got that minor league fear, feel. I think it's, I can't remember. Dad, let me know in the comments if it's a minor league team or if it's still like independent league, but it's, you know, if you've ever gone to a minor league baseball game, you know, they don't take themselves as seriously. The kids can have a lot of fun. So that's that's a fun experience as well. All right. Moving on here. I want to go over to ranking the top things in Cincinnati. And again, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. What's up, J.D. Bluffs? Uh, let me go back here real quick. Um, J.D.'s watching from. Uh, oh, help me out there. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Am I saying that right? Thinking about moving to Cincinnati. Awesome. Uh, thank you for helping me with my decision, making your channel rules. Hey, that's what we're trying to do here is help you guys out. Um, yeah, hit us up, uh, info at teamstanio.com. Uh, would love to help you. Any, any questions you have about moving to the area? Uh, and Alex is saying Rumpke Arena. <laughs> yes. Uh, referring back to uh, Heritage Bank Center, which used to be U.S. Bank Arena. It's it could, it could use some updating for sure, Alex. Um, help, help us out with that. So, okay. So top things overall. So I, here's, what, here's what I wanted to do on this. And here was my thought. When I go to a new city, I don't know if you guys do this. I look at, I kind of look at Yelp. I kind of look at the tried and true apps that have the most ratings. Um, I'm looking at Yelp. I'm always looking at TripAdvisor. And so I wanted to do on tonight's uh, video is kind of match up. What does TripAdvisor say are the top? things to do in Cincinnati and if those actually are the top things to do to do or not because some of them can be a little outdated some of them are going to be um you know they're going to be reviews from people uh not from in town or just on a tour um and so let's just look at the top attractions and we'll give our thoughts and you guys uh who've lived here before or watching uh on the show tonight feel free to to shout out what you think too would love to hear if you are coming in I do recommend some of these tours are awesome uh, whether it's like a brewery tour self-guided tour. If you're getting on a Segway, um, you can get, there's so much history in Cincinnati and you, and it's so kind of packed in to the downtown area. You can see so many cool things in a little bit of, a little bit of time. It might really be worth it. You know, as you're kind of doing that river tour, maybe you're ch checking out the banks, maybe you're over in Newport looking at the views from the levee there. Um, but you might want to hop on a tour. It could be really good. Okay. So let's get into these top attractions in Cincinnati. We're going to go in the order that TripAdvisor has them and we'll see, we'll see what we think. Um, so number one on the list, top attraction in Cincinnati, they've got the Cincinnati zoo and botanical garden. So now what we see here is, uh, and the zoo is awesome. I, I don't know if I would call it like living here, the number one, my favorite thing to do in Cincinnati, but I would say there's a reason why it's number one. <laughs> like it is really, really awesome. Um, both the zoo itself and, and the variety of animals they have and how they keep uh, track of the, the, botan the botanical gardens. And you see here on the front, we've got, uh, we've been, you know, pushing that Fiona, um, the, our hippo, 
a lot of great marketing on Fiona. Super cute because if you if you know from out of town, Harambe, rest in peace. We got kind of had a little PR campaign to to get the memory past Harambe, and that that was really such a tragic situation. Uh, but the zoo itself is amazing. Um, it's it's pretty hard to beat for number one. Uh, both and and there's all year round events at the zoo. I'm just going to click into this real quick. Uh, give you a little details. It's the second oldest zoo in the United States. It's considered one of the best in the country. It's most renowned for its endangered species and birthing programs, particularly for gorillas and white tigers, and has a wonderful collection of felines and delightful manatees exhibit. So um, it is a great, great stop uh, coming in at number one, maybe so. Um, but yes, I recommend the zoo. Number two, Great American Ballpark. Okay, so this one's near and dear to my heart. This I, I'm a huge baseball fan. I'm actually getting back into it. I was out, out, you know, I've been kind of mainly Bengals the last few years, and now um, the Reds are doing great. And so um, Great American Ballpark is awesome. We did a video um, about Great American Ballpark on the channel. You can check that out, especially for families, why it's such a good environment. And I, so I think if you have kids, if you're going to choose between like a Bengals and a Reds game, unless your kids are teenagers and older, I definitely recommend the, the Reds ballpark. It's going to be more family friendly oriented. Uh, and they've done so many things to make it uh, a great experience for families. Like, especially if you're down that right field corner, uh, first base side and right field corner on the first level, there's like, there's actually three levels on the main level where you walk in the stadium, they've got a wiffle ball field. So kids are always playing that throughout the game. They've got a playground there. Then you can take these slides down a level. Kids go down, they have batting cage, like actual batting cages down there. And the kids can go to, go down there, do the slide down, hit some, hit some balls in the batting cage, come back up. And then on the second level up top in the right field, they put in another playground. They've got wiffle ball batting cages up there. They've got um, like a nursing stations for moms, which is like phenomenal, like private rooms where you can watch the game. But if you have a newborn, you can go in there. That's just like, I love that. Um, super family friend friendly. Um, I, I love going to a game at the ballpark. It's, it's, um, you know, when it first opened up and uh, from Synergy Field, I was kind of like, eh, like it, it wasn't that great, but they kept adding things every single year to make the experience better and better. And now that we've got a team, you know, a first place team, it's super exciting. And coming up on it, July 14th, we are less than two weeks away, folks, of um, this Team Stanio is doing an event at the Reds game. We've got 200 tickets. And so if you're part of the Stanio clan, you know, if you've been a, a, a past client, we're always doing the, these events. Um, but we'll be down at the ballpark taking in the game. Um, and we've got some, some other fun goodies for you. So super excited for that. Um... Whoops, going back to a few comments here. So Mark jumped in again. Y'all, y'all's in the Frontier League, thank you, which entertains uh, locals and produces candidates for the minor league. So lower tier of of baseball a little bit, but still, it's 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 the kind of place where we've got like dollar dog and dollar beer nights, you know, and inflatables for the kids. So super fun at the Florence Hall. Uh, Alex, how long will the Reds keep their roster intact? Now, this is a great point. Um, for those of you out of town, you probably don't feel this pain like we here in Cincinnati do because it's almost traditionally been like the Reds are a minor league team for the major league spending teams. And that's that is a sad thing. Uh, I, I kind of wish in, in Major League Baseball, actually, I, I really wish they would put in a salary cap so that the smaller market teams like Cincinnati could compete uh, and there'd be more parity in the league like there is in the NFL. I think that's, I think that's one thing the NFL definitely got right because even if you have, even if you're in last place one year, you could, um, which the Bengals were, you could go to the Super Bowl the next year and that's uh, you get the right quarterback, Joe Burrow, and uh, you bounce right back because there's not that much difference between the teams. What Alex is saying here is, uh, is true is we've got a ton of young talent for the Reds, uh, but we often, you know, trade off that talent and it gets poached after a little bit. So that is a sad thing, but it's happening. Great American ballpark. Number two on the list. Strongly recommend it. Let's keep going. Cincinnati art museum. Yes. Um, this is an awesome attraction. Now, and this is actually coming from someone who is like, um, I don't even really get visual art. I, I'm more of like music in terms of artistic and sport than I am visual art. Uh, but this museum is awesome. It, it actually is incredible. It's one of the most pre 
prestigious art museums in the country with over 67,000 works of art. This grandiose building atop an Eden Park Hill is well known for its 19th century European and American paintings, but also contains numerous other works, including an outstanding pottery gallery. Um, so here's a few image, few images. Let me get full view here so you guys can see some of this. That didn't really work, did it? Um, these pictures don't do it justice, but if you have time, they're, they're always bringing in cool different event uh, exhibits. Uh, and like I said, they've got this Claude Monet ex experiential exhibit in, in right now that I definitely want to check out. Man, it's awesome. So yes, uh, Cincinnati Art Museum, that that is that is deserving. If you like museums, um, that is deserving of a number three. Okay, number four, the Cincinnati Museum Center. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but if you've ever driven through or seen skylines of Cincinnati, uh, this building is pretty, um, pretty memorable. So let's see if I can get that out. That this view right here, where it looks like a kind of an old style radio. Um, whoops, let me get Alex's comment off of here. Um, the museum center is awesome. Great place to take your kids. You've got these art deco walls. Um, very, very cool. Uh, just the architecture itself is cool. And then inside there, again, they're always rotating. Awesome, um, awesome exhibits. Uh, you got an Omnimax theater there. And so um, they've always got very, very cool shows there. Um, again, wonderful, wonderful museum. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's deserving. I'm going to say it. It's deserving to be in this top 15 list. Okay, American Sign Museum. You guys help me out on this one. I have never been to the American Sign Museum. This is ranking number five on the list. Um, I don't have a desire to go to the American Sign Museum. Um, every time I see a like Cincinnati, like a, a national game of the Bengals, for some reason, uh, it's probably because they're looking at TripAdvisor. The producer sends some cameraman to the American Sign Museum to shoot a bunch of shots of a bunch of neon signs. I don't know anyone in my friend circles. Like I literally don't know a single person in my life that's been like, dude, the sign museum. Uh, now I'm not. So if you run the sign museum, I'm sorry, but like uh, it's a bunch of neon signs. Uh, and I guess like it, it's probably a stroll down memory lane is kind of the thing. Like it's a big collection. Uh, oops, sorry. I'm trying to show you these pictures as well. You know, you got the big boy, you got all these different like Howard Johnson, like nostalgic kind of signs, right? Howard Johnson's. Uh, but to be number five on the list, I'm going to give this a big no. Big no for me uh, being number five on the list of things to do in the city. Now, National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, maybe yes. Um, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, Cincinnati is kind of this place where the North meets the South. And, and in the Civil War, it was a very serious spot when it comes to uh, the Underground Railroad and slaves escaping the South to get into the North. So this museum documents all that located in Cincinnati, Ohio. The National Underground Railroad Freedom Center stands as the nation's newest monument to freedom. It brings to life the importance and relevance of struggles for freedom around the world and throughout history. Um, so again, maybe not something you're doing on a weekend trip, potentially, but uh, deserving in this top 10, top 15, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's keep going. Roebling Suspension Bridge, yes. Now, this is going to be one of those that kind of, um, I would say this one kind of, the Roebling and like a few of these parks downtown, you can kind of uh, you can kind of hit them up in multiple ways. So it's got the Roebling, but you can really combine that with the banks. You can combine that with Sawyer Point and... Yeatman's Cove. I, I always thought it was Yeatman's, but somebody in my comments blew me up this week and said, you're obviously not from Cincinnati. It's Yeatman's Cove. Uh, so Yeatman's Cove. Um, but the Roebling Bridge, uh, yes. Roebling Bridge is amazing. Uh, there's a reason why it is the my logo, because I love this bridge. I think it's beautiful. Um, the, the, the guy who built it uh, is the same guy who built the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. Um, you're always going to get amazing skyline views. You can walk across it. Uh, it's also nicknamed the singing bridge because when cars go across it, it's a metal grate. And so it makes kind of like this humming boo sound. Um, I, and if you guys are from here, you know, that was pretty on pitch, I think. Boo. Um, okay. So that's the Roebling bridge, Spring Grove Cemetery and Ar uh, Arborit Arborit Arboretum. It's a hard word to say. Very cool cemetery. Uh, I'm going to click into this real quick. 
Um, is it so? And it doesn't give me an overview here. Um, huge old cemetery, very well kept, very cool grounds, some cool architecture in here. It actually is like to take your kids there to walk around for runs for exercising. Really cool. Um, it is very, very cool. Is it a top attraction in Cincinnati? If you're coming here, eh, like, do you really want to go to a city to see a cemetery? Um, maybe, maybe you do, but, um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd put that in my top 10, but if you live here, definitely worth going. If you're coming in here for a weekend, no, nah, it shouldn't be on the list. You don't need to go to a cemetery for a weekend visit. Uh, but if you live here and you like peaceful, if you want to read, if you want to write, if you want to think, if you want to take a walk, if you want to go for a run, if you want to uh, meditate on your own mortality, like, uh, which is a, a good thing to do. I have a friend who prefers going to uh, funerals over weddings because it helps him. I know that sounds morbid, but uh, it makes him think that life is short and you should seize the day. Carpe diem. Okay. Uh, going on, Crone Conservatory. Uh, this place is cool. This is in Eden Park. Um, I'm looking for that overview. Let me see if I can get a quick overview on their website here. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Crone Conservatory, very cool. I will say this. Um, so it's it's indoor. Uh, let me try to get you. It's, it's kind of like botanical gardens inside. There's a butterfly exhibit that's always fun. Uh, when you're in the winter, my favorite time to go to Crone Conservatory is the winter time. Uh, if you haven't been able to take a trip um, to Florida or Cancun or somewhere out of here and your skin is super dry and everything's cold and gray, I will say that getting into the Crone, I wish everything was not turned this way so you guys could see it. There you go. Um, you walk in there and it's humid and... Um, you know, you get some moisture back in your, in your life and some skin. You're like, Oh my gosh, it's a tropical paradise. Um, so very cool. Uh, I do. I'm very glad this is part of Cincinnati. It's a great place to take the kids. I do like the Crone conservatory. Uh, it is a cool thing to do. Moving on Smale riverfront park. Yes, this is a top 10. Uh, this is a top 10 hands down. And, um, so this park is down on the Ohio side on the Cincinnati side. And this park is right by the Roebling Bridge. It's kind of on both sides of the Roebling Bridge. Um, so you can see the bridge there. And it extends kind of close to Paul Brown Stadium all the way to basically um, Great American Ballpark. So you can kind of see there's Paul Brown Stadium right there. And uh, there's a lot of green space. There's playgrounds. There uh, are like exercise equipment. Uh, it's beautiful because you've got the view of downtown. You've got the view of the Roebling. This is just an awesome park. Uh, this used to be a place. So when I was a kid, my, um, we used, when we, we used to come down, mainly we'd come down to Cincinnati downtown for Reds games at, uh, old riverfront stadium, which turned into synergy field, uh, which then got bl blowed up. Uh, and, but we would, we would always park in Covington and we would walk across the Roebling bridge, um, to come to Cincinnati and where the banks uh, or where, uh, Smale riverfront park is right now was a mud pit and uh, a collection for Ohio River driftwood. It, there was nothing there. It was disgusting. And it smelled bad. And like, it was just ugly. It was just super ugly. And like, there were some parking. There was like a, little, a parking lot on a hill that you could park on when the river didn't like flood up and take your car <laughs> down the river. And what they did with this and the entire Banks project is like, I'm so happy. It just makes me really, really happy that they did this. Um, because it's, it's a very, very cool place to say. Um, okay, a few other comments. Uh, JD, checking in. What's up? When I move to Cincinnati, I'll be looking to rent. I'm in my mid-20s. Uh, male who likes to live a relaxed lifestyle. Give me one area in Cincy. Er give me one area in Cincy and one area in Northern Kentucky, in Kentucky you'd suggest to look for a rental. Great question. Um, depends on where you're working. I don't know if you're, you're working from home. If you're mid-20s, I'm guessing you want to go downtown OTR more. So, um, in, hmm, in Northern Kentucky, I would look at both Newport or Covington, either one, because, uh, you, you can rent down there, you can have some historic, but you can walk from there to, to everything downtown has to offer. Plus Covington and Northern and Newport both have their own, um, 
you know, entertainment districts with great restaurants and bars, and they have the view of the skyline. <laughs> that's the, that's kind of like the, the great secret about Northern Kentucky is um, we get all the great views of, of, uh, of downtown Cincinnati. In fact, I just shot a video this week, probably be coming out next week on um, the ovation development that's happening at the junction of the Licking River and Ohio River in Newport with these um, million dollar condos. So a little pricey. Uh, you're probably not looking to rent there. Um, but, um, you know, they're taking advantage of, they're, they're going to make it a mixed retail work, live space, and they're going to have like the best use of the city because they're right there at, they're right there across from Great American Ballpark, basically. Uh, on the Cincinnati side, um, maybe Oakley, a very cool place. There's, uh, if you're not downtown, I, I think Oakley is a great place to rent. A lot of people like North Side as well for people in their 20s in terms of kind of nightlife and things to do. Um, and potentially, you know, even downtown places like Pendleton could be somewhere you're looking at um, or even over the Rhine. Um, and there's, like I said, there's more residential happening in downtown. Depends on your budget, depends on where your work is, things like that. But um, hopefully that helps give you a few areas where you're thinking. Um Wayman, what's up? Hey guys, this is by the way, so much fun. Thank you for checking in and asking your questions. This is, was my hope for doing this live where you guys could, could ask these questions. So I, I hope that's helpful for you and, and keep asking, let me know where you're watching from and let me know your questions. Wayman, uh, tuning in from Buffalo. What is up? Glad to have you here. You'll have to visit Cincinnati again soon. Yes, you will. Now, Wayman, are you a Bills fan? Number one. And, uh, number two, um, yeah, come back. And are we playing each other this year? I know we're playing the Chiefs, but I can't remember if we're playing the Bills again or not. But that was a crazy experience last year with uh, the Bills and Bengals game. Wayman, thanks for checking in. Love to have you here. Um, Alex, again, I'm surprised that Finley Market isn't higher. Yeah, let's get back to this. So where are we? Um, okay, Finley Market, 11. Smell, 10. Finley, okay. So Alex, I'm with you. Like, if you're in, again, go watch. I, I did a video called, like, 24 Hours in Cincinnati. But my thought was, come in from the airport go to Newport first so you can get those views of downtown and maybe check out like the levee and what's going on that, down there. Then go across the Smale Riverfront, then hop on the streetcar, maybe stop by like Fountain Square uh, to feel what that is downtown, but then hop up to Finley Market and Ryan Geis, Music Hall, Washington Park. That's going to be a great day trip right there. Uh, and Finley Market, so let's pop into this. Yeah, this is, this is that. I mean, this should be top 10. Totally agree. Finley Market is a variety of merchants uh, where a variety of merchants feature their produce and wares in these distinct location categories. Uh, the Market House, Farmers, Farmer's Market, Outdoor, and Storefront. Um, how can I get this? I want to blow this up for you. Full screen, but I don't know. All right, so here's some pictures of Finley Market. The Farmer's Market, Ohio's oldest surviving municipal market house. Pretty cool. Finley Market was designed under the direction of city civil engineer Alfred West Gilbert. Um, it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1972. The structure was among the first market home in the United States to use iron frame construction technology. Um, great place to visit. You got fresh, you got fresh farmer's market items, but you also have a huge variety of items. So there you go. Um, fresh, fresh, fresh. Salt pork, bacon bits. Uh, you got to get some, I'm sure you can find some Geta down there, uh, Cincinnati staple. And the streetcar, like I said, goes right here. The streetcar goes from here all the way down to the banks uh, and Smale Riverfront and the, you know, the stadiums and the banks down there by the river. And if you don't know, the, the, um, the streetcar is free. So you don't have to buy a ticket. Just hop on. There's a couple, you know, um, cars going around all the time. So yes, Finley Market, definitely on the list. Something you should check out. Uh, Going to have a good time there. All right, moving on. The Riverwalk. So this is what I'm saying. Like, this isn't really a thing. Uh, the Riverwalk, like the Roebling Bridge. I mean, they're kind of the same thing. I, I mean, I guess what they're saying is this is the trail uh, at Smale Riverfront. There's, and there's one on both sides, by the way. There's one, if you can see this over here where my mouse is over on the Covington side that has some pretty cool historical murals down there. And so if you want, you, I mean, you can do the river walk here. You can walk across the Roebling. You can do the river walk down there. Um, but take a pleasant walk along the Ohio River and enjoy the fantastic views of the Cincinnati skyline. Um, 
so yeah, that's I don't I I guess that's a different thing than Smell Riverfront Park, but you're gonna be kind of doing all the things together. Let's keep going here. So we're beyond 12. Um uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. What else do we got? Eden Park. Okay. Um, and I while while we're hitting the parks, um, I think I will take a minute to say this because we're gonna hit another park in just a minute. Um the park system in Cincinnati is top notch. It, it really is phenomenal. You have um, not only like play the, the amount of playgrounds and parks you have like in the different neighborhoods, but the quality of parks is pretty outstanding in Cincinnati. Um, so this is, a you know, in terms of things to do in general in Cincinnati, the parks system is fantastic. Beautiful scenic park in downtown Cincinnati. Um, Chrome Conservatory, as I mentioned, is in Eden Park. Um, you got some great views of the river. You got views of downtown. The art museum, excuse me, the art museum that we mentioned before is located right there in Eden Park. So you can hit a lot of these things uh, right together here. Um, you got the beautiful, um, help me out here. What's this uh, lake called? Mirror Lake, I think is what it's called. Um, this, these beautiful bridges. Uh, it just very, very pretty, walkable, awesome park. It's actually not my favorite. If We'll keep going here. Cathedral Basilica of the Assumption. So check out this beautiful architecture here. In terms of top attractions overall, it's beautiful. <clears throat> yes. Now this is... Um, sorry for the scrolling. Um, yeah, I mean, this is gorgeous, right? It looks just like Notre Dame. Notre Dame, sorry. Um, so if you love the architecture, I mean, look at that. That is just, that's outstanding. Um, man, I need to go here. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of the one in Covington. Is this, or maybe this is. Help me out. Is this Covington or downtown? Um, it says Cincinnati. Yeah, this is Covington. Okay. I'm like, wait a second. This looks like the one in Covington because it is. Okay. So that's in Covington, Kentucky. If you want to check that out, very cool site. Um, is it in the top 15? Again, depends on what you're interested in. And that's obviously everything things to do. It's going to be about what are you really interested in? Um, but if you, you know, <clears throat> one thing that Cincinnati definitely is known for is its architecture. And this is one of them. I mean, this is, that's, a, that's an ounce, <laughs> like unbelievably beautiful um cathedral uh of course you are of course you are a bills fan well hey you know the demar thing that was a sad thing uh but we were on our way to rolling you in that game as we did in the playoffs and it's going to happen again this year um <clears throat> thanks a lot for being a great resource you're absolutely welcome cincinnati is one of my relocation considerations what are your thoughts on living in the mount adams area good question um mount adams is beautiful um it is, so for those of you who don't know, um, let me see if I can pull up the map real quick. Ohio. It is just east of downtown and it, Mount Adams, so it's up on a hill right here. And we just mentioned Eden Park and the Art Museum that's right here. So you're right by all those things. And you've got these amazing views um, of you know, both the river and you're usually looking here it is of you guys aren't seeing anything I'm seeing. I'm sorry. Here we go. So um, you're going to have these views looking west towards downtown Cincinnati. You're going to have these uh, views of the river and just showing you guys where this is. Mount Adams is right here in this little pocket. Um, so you're just east of downtown. You can easily hop down into downtown items, uh, the, the banks over the Rhine. Mount Adams kind of is like um, the... It's kind of like it was where all the top restaurants were in Cincinnati about 20 years ago, um, where all the top chefs went. And then they all kind of migrated down to over the Rhine. But there still are some like iconic places up in Mount Adams that are wonderful. It's pretty hilly, but it's like it's a really, really cool, beautiful community. Um, location in terms of the city is awesome. I think Mount Adams is is uh, a great pick if you were choosing somewhere to live in the city. Okay, um, where are we? 
how long in are we here? You guys getting bored yet? Uh, we're about 40 minutes in, so we'll go a little bit longer. Thank you guys so much again for, for stopping in. Uh, but let's, so maybe we'll do a little quicker here in these top Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. Again, if you love sports and the Reds, it's awesome. If you love history, Reds were the first uh, major, first professional sport, uh, first professional major league baseball team. And so amazing history there. And, and of course the Reds have had a great history themselves. So that's, that is worth a, a visit again, if you like baseball at all, if not, you're going to be bored to tears. Fountain square downtown ranked 16th. Yeah. But again, like what you need to know about fountain square is there's, you know, in terms of the things to do on a weekend week out basis, there's going to be a lot going on there. And so it's good to familiarize yourself with the area uh, and that's why I said, if you take, if you start Newport and take the street and go across to the, to the banks and then take the streetcar up, get off at Fountain Square and see what's going on there. Cause there's usually some kind of activity going on in Fountain Square. Um, Taft, Taft Museum of Art, not as popular as the other one, but yes, very cool. Uh, I'm just going to start saying stuff that shouldn't be here or should be here. Greater Cincinnati Police Museum. Eh. Like if you are, again, if this is one of your interests, then maybe so. Is, should it be in the top 20 of Cincinnati things to do? Probably not. William Howard, Howard Taft. Okay, Cincinnati Music Hall. Yes, this should be higher in my opinion. I love this building. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's my favorite architectural building in Cincinnati. Built in 1850, 1878 and de designated a National Historic Landmark in 1975. Cincinnati's Music Hall is among the city's most recognizable buildings. Impressive from the outside for its Victorian gothic architecture it's arguably more remarkable on the inside and they just spent millions of dollars uh redoing the in inside probably five years ago now something like that um it's i mean guys look at this music hall is awesome I, I don't i have young kids so i don't get to the symphony much but i want to go more i <clears throat> um i think this building is unbelievable uh this is actually where we have our keller williams annual uh kind of like awards party show in the, this kind of adjacent building here at music hall um this is right outside of washington park again the streetcar goes right by here if you're coming into town for things to do this absolutely has to be on your list <clears throat> and if you live here uh then go down to the symphony check out the pops i mean they got all kinds of good stuff here uh and it's good to have a little culture in our lives right Let's not lose all the things that are beautiful in this social media world that we live in. Carew Tower, um, number 21. <clears throat> this used to be, I'll take a drink here. Uh, if you guys are just jumping into the stream, let us know uh, where you're watching from. Let us know if you have any questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably should stop because my voice is getting tired. This used to be higher, I think, because it was like the tallest building in Cincinnati and you could like have the best view. Now I'm like, meh. You know, it's still cool because you can get up. I mean, you can get up to the very top and get a cool view. But um, yeah, I don't know. Top 20. Sure. We'll put it. We'll put it there. Washington Park. Yes, definitely. Ryan Guys Brewery. Yes, definitely. These things should be on your list. Uh, I mentioned Washington Park with with Music Hall. Those things kind of go together. And Ryan Guys should kind of go together with your Finley Market. This is <clears throat> this is maybe um, I mean, there's a lot of great breweries to go down to go to in town. We might have to do a top breweries in Cincinnati. You guys watching, if you're from here, Alex, if you're still on here, what's your favorite brewery? Ryan Geist is great. Um, big open space. It's a good place to take your kids even because you can play some cornhole. There's like room for them to breathe. Like in the winter when there's not a lot of things to do, go down to Ryan Geist. It's, it's great. They have a rooftop bar. Um, recently, I had a uh, private event here where I got to meet John Maxwell. That was super cool. I enjoyed that. Um, but yes, breweries in town ryan geist is one you can hit downtown pretty easily so yeah that should be on your list mount adams 24 we just talked about that coney island and <clears throat> coney island is a fun little uh, kind of water park where they took away all the rides so i'm gonna bump this down on the list um again except for the the hot air balloon show that is pretty worth going anderson ferry <clears throat> even though my dad takes my kids on this and um uh, gets gets in the car it's just it's a ferry on the west side of cincinnati uh is it should it be ranked 26 for things to do in Cincinnati? Nah. Winton Woods Park. Again, if you live here, Winton Woods Park is awesome. It's not a park that I would say you definitely have to go to. Paul Brown Stadium is 28th on the list. This should be like top five, top 10 now. And it's not Paul Brown Stadium, TripAdvisor. We got to update this. It's now Paycor Stadium. Um, 
And now over the years, does it deserve the 28th ranking that it has? Yes, because the Bengals have been bad for many, many decades. Uh, but right now, the Bengals are like the hottest ticket in town and they're super fun. And we're going to go win the Super Bowl this year. So Paul Brown Stadium should probably be, um, you know, it should probably be at least top 10, if not top five. And the, <clears throat> the stadium itself is kind of like, meh, uh, again. But now, if you don't know anything about Cincinnati, uh, maybe you do know, most people don't like the owners. It's called Paul Brown because he is actually who brought, Paul Brown was the manager who uh, owned, did he own the Cleveland Browns? I believe he owned the Cleveland Browns, but he kind of got kicked out, bought out, kicked out, came down, started the Bengals, um, and Paul Brown was named after him. His son, Mike Brown, is the current owner. Mike is in his late 80s. I love listening to interviews. I know people kind of dislike Mike Brown, but like I could listen to that guy talk forever. Um, his daughter, Katie Blackburn and Troy Blackburn, they're next in line in succession. And her daughters, uh, Elizabeth and uh, help me out. There's, an, there's two daughters. Elizabeth and I'm forgetting the other Blackburn daughter, but they've brought in a lot of fun the last few years. They brought in a ring of honor, which is kind of like our, the Bengals hall of fame. <clears throat> they brought in new jerseys. Um, they brought in Taylor Swift. So like there's things happening where this should be not ranked 28th. It should be ranked top five. <sighs> Who days, right? Um, I'm a cider fan, Northwide Cidery, but I can't wait for March 1st to open at FSQ. Awesome. Yep. Northwood Cidery. I haven't been there. That's, um, I have to check that out. Um, I like cider. I'm a fan of cider. So, okay. Just a few more here and then we will wrap it up. If you guys have any other top favorite things that you love, let me know. Paul Brown should definitely be ranked higher. Playhouse in the park. That's up in, uh, Eden park. My, um, that's really good. Over the Rhine, again, it's ranked 30th. That's kind of like a pretty broad thing, but yeah, sure, over the Rhine. Because uh, that's like blocks and blocks of things to do. Okay, here's one I wanted to mention, <clears throat> Alt Park. This is, this. I think Alt Park is my favorite park, uh, especially for a date, because it's just so beautiful. Um, it's got that French feel. Um, it's perfectly manicured. Um, a lot of people go up here for weddings to take their wedding photos. Uh, there's some trails around there. I don't know why this photo is here, but it is. That's not Alt Park. That's the Roebling Bridge. Um, <clears throat> it, Alt Park's just up there. I, so um, I just think it's beautiful. I mean, look at that view from the top. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a great place for a picnic, a uh, great place for a date. Um, just just beautiful. I'm glad I, it, this Alt Park, when I go here and I read the plaques of the people who donated things, I just look at, I just read those plaques and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like, thank you for creating beauty and vision, like vision for beauty in this city. Um, Cause places like this are just, they're just gems and they're um, something that makes Cincinnati, I think truly, truly special. Um, observatory. That's a mall, the Kenwood town center, the contemporary art center. And then you're starting to get into breakout games. I want to see if anything Hyde park, should probably be up on the list, like above breakout games. I think Hyde Park should be above. It's just a little town, uh, beautiful little town square there. Uh, some shops, some uh, cool restaurants, coffee shops. Um, yeah, uh, Hyde Park's worth going to. Uh, all right, we're starting to get down the list in the 40s. Mount Carmel Brewing, uh, if you like, I'm just going to say this, if you like a nut brown ale, Mount Carmel Brewing does not get nearly the attention it should for that beer because it is awesome. Plum Street Temple, uh, Cathedral Basilica, which was already mentioned. Okay, so, and then Taft Theater, so different theaters. All right, I think we're coming to the end. Uh, Crossroads Church, that's kind of like the mega church here in Cincinnati. They bought a bunch of old, like, uh, um, home, not Home Depots, but uh, what were the names? What were the names of the, the hardware stores? Not Home Depot or Lowe's that like went out of style. They were green. I don't remember the name of them, but they like uh, Crossroads. Uh, we 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 know a lot of people who go to Crossroads. We went to Crossroads for a few years. Um, they are doing a lot of good in the city in a lot of different ways. So uh, they're one of the largest 
They've been one of the fastest growing churches in the nation for several years. I don't know where they're at on that list right now, but they do a lot of, lot of good things in the city. If you want to go to a church service while you're here, it's going to be, it's going to have one of those mega church feels. So, um, you're going to be in a very dark sanctuary with very loud music. Uh, so, but uh, the, the pastor, Brian Tome, uh, good dude. They've done a lot of great, great work in the city and um, I'm glad they're here as well. So, okay. I think that's going to wrap it up for top things to do. 50 West Brewery, another good brewery. If I were going to rank the breweries, Menards, no, not Menards. Um, Alex, good guess. It was older. It was like not old time pottery getting some guesses here it was <sighs> something block like something like that but i can't remember um let's see here slightly off topic are you a part of the bni chapter in cincy is a bni presence useful and resourceful in city that's important to my relocation i run my own business um good question i was part of a bni back in like my 20s it was a long time ago uh, when I like sold health insurance and did um, like financial planning, I think. But um, there, there are chapters that I know that are up and going. I don't use it for my business. I use this because I like this better um, than, than marketing. But I, I do know there are chapters up and going. I, I've been approached by a few people like insurance agents and things like that um, who are like, hey, we got an opening. Do you want to come in? So that, that does exist here. Um, and beyond that, with the chambers as well, if you own your own business, there's a lot of ways to connect and network here. But yeah, good question. Um, so cool. Um, okay, one last uh, final call, I guess, if you guys have any other questions before we hop out. Um, yeah, I hope that was helpful for you guys and getting a feel for things to do in Cincinnati, knowing that, hey, it's not just, um, you know, it's not just a boring Midwest city. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, was Kings Island on the list? Hang on. Hang on a second. I have not seen Kings Island. Did I pass it? Sawyer Park, the Flying Pig Marathon, very cool event. Rookwood Commons, uh, blah, 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 blah. Alms Park, another beautiful one. That's pretty close to my work. Uh, got cool views of Lunkin Airport, so you can watch planes take in and off. Uh, Cincinnati. Where is Kings Island? Did I miss it? Jungle Gyms is fun. Jungle Gyms is fun. <laughs> that guy's a weird dude, but he's got a lot of fun things in his store. Nipper Stadium. I must have passed it, right? There's no way that Kings Island is like 90th by Julius Park and Anderson, which I used to live by there. All right. What? 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 Kings Island, Mason, Ohio, number one of 11 of things to do in Mason. But what about in Cincinnati? Anyway, Kings oh, and the Western and Southern open guys. I'm nervous about this. Uh, I'm nervous that we might lose this awesome event. So there's, I've been trying to not share this on the channel cause I'm sad about it, but the Western Southern is awesome. Uh, it's, it's an event where the top, tennis players in the world always come and it's usually right before the U S open and they kind of use it as a warm up. and professional players kind of like it because Cincinnati's like under the radar a little bit and you don't have like New York press. And so, and then they go to Kings Island afterwards and have fun. So, um, but a guy from, is it Charleston? Like a super rich billionaire from Charleston, I think bought it and is potentially moving it to Charleston. He's either, I talked to my friend, uh, Mr. Barber who owns a business in town and loves tennis. Uh, and, and my friend said they're either going to, uh, so he's either going to move it or they are, um, you know, kind of playing Cincinnati movers and shakers to try to get greater tax benefits for the expansion that they need as the tournament expands. But I would be super sad to see this thing go. Cause it's been a staple event in the city for years. Um, okay. We're going to wrap it up here, guys. Um, make a video about top breweries. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's gotta happen. Right. Um, if I were to name them off the top of my head, we got Ryan Geist, Mad Tree, Mount Carmel, 50 West, 50 West, uh, coast to coast. Very good. Uh, Ryan Geist truth is obviously a staple. Um, um, Mad Tree, you know, I, I love the space at Mad Tree. I'm not like crazy about the beers. Braxton brewery and the, in Covington, I like Braxton a lot. They come out with some good stuff as well. So, uh, yes, Sue 50 West. Exactly. Um, 
that place is great. And, and Bobby's a huge Bengals fan, the owner. I met him uh, the last time the, the Bengals podcast had a show there. I went down there and met him, which was cool. That place is fun. Um, they've got a, a livery volleyball there, lots of fun stuff to do there. So a lot of people actually from my office here at Keller Williams go to 50 West all the time and play volleyball. So that's a lot of fun. Third Eye is also good. They, yep, I, I'll give them credit too. So maybe, you know, maybe if there's any breweries who are watching this and you can, you know, we're not sponsored yet, but I wouldn't mind a sponsored video at a brewery tour. That would be pretty fun. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, oh, one more thing, I guess, before we want to go. <laughs> this, I guess I do sell real estate, right? But I forgot about that. Uh, I just want to give you a really quick look at the market. This will take two seconds. Um, here's where we're at in the market. Last week, we talked a lot about it. But in the last week, um, 575 new listings came on the market. Uh, there was 450 active, 575 new listings, 585 went, uh, not went pending, but were pending and 604 sold. So there's 450 active listings on the market. We'll look at this kind of a, as a week by week basis. Now this is just the, um, Cincinnati. There's two different MLSs, but this gives you a feel of what we've been seeing kind of time in and time out, which is like, there's low inventory in the market, but, um, if you're trying to buy a house in the area, we'd love to obviously be your realtor of choice. We'll help you navigate whatever market, whether it's a, a seller's market, low inventory, or if you're even interested in new construction, we can help you out with that. So um, Wooden Casket also has great cider. I mean, you're convincing me, Alex. So uh, we might have to do a, a, you know, throw these cider tours in here. Guys, thank you so much for watching and checking in. This was way more fun than last time because a bunch of you checked in and watched. So, and I uh, love having you interact. Um, again, we're going to be doing these every Sunday night for a while, as often as my wife. Actually, next week we might be off. Depends on what Mark from Florence can help me out with because uh, my wife is on a, a women's retreat with our church. So um, I might have the five kids next week. We'll see. She gets back mid-afternoon. We'll see how things are doing. I'll be prepared, Okay. So I'll be prepared and we'll see what happens, but we might have to take a week off. Um, but point is, we're going to be doing these as on an ongoing basis. Love, love, love having you guys check in from all across the country. If you're looking to move to Cincinnati uh, and love being able to answer your questions and hopefully just give you more info like this that helps you understand the, uh, what the area is all about, what it's like living here. Uh, hope this is good for you. So guys, I'm going to check out. Hope you have a great night. Hope you have an amazing 4th of July. Thanks so much for watching and, uh, and being a part of this. We'll see you next time.